Worldwide, groundwaters are beginning to run dry, and some places that you might not expect will soon be facing a water crisis. Once the water supply of a country runs low, they will rely upon water-rich countries in order to function. The countries with water in the next century will be massive economic players, similar to how oil-rich countries were the massive economic players over the past century. The largest contributing factor that has determined which countries are superpowers and which countries fade into darkness is the access to water. And this is something that most people may not think about on a daily basis, because these days you simply turn on a tap and water comes out. But how it gets to your tap in the first place is one of the best indicators in determining the success of a country. And in fact, we might be seeing the creation of some water empires right in front of our very eyes. Lack of fresh water supply tends to be correlated with the rise and fall of civilizations. Or at least it was. But then, a strange thing happened. Once the technology of human civilization advanced, we began creating new ways to access fresh water. The most important one today is accessing groundwater. You see, when you look at the Earth, roughly 97% of the water is salt water, which is undrinkable for humans. Roughly 2% of the Earth's water is frozen in ice, and only 1% of the water on Earth is fresh water that humans find useful. But even that is a misleading number. Because only 30% of the fresh water on Earth is located on the surface in things like lakes and rivers. Yet 70% of the fresh water on Earth is actually located underground, which is called groundwater. But humans for millennia did not have the technology to extract large quantities of water from the ground. Even though small wells were used to extract groundwater back in 8000 BCE, the population was still largely reliant upon being close to a river or a lake. But that was then, and this is now. In the world today, there are over 34 countries and territories without any rivers. The most notable on this list is Saudi Arabia. In fact, when you look at Saudi Arabia using satellite imagery, you will see that there are no major sources of fresh water at all, as most of the country seems to be covered in mountains, dunes, and deserts. And the same can be said for other countries like Yemen, Libya, the United Arab Emirates, and Qatar. But if you were to zoom in on some of these places, you might see something that would surprise you. Located seemingly in the middle of a desert, is a series of circular crop fields. But how could this be when the country seems to have no nearby water sources? Well, the answer is a little bit complicated. The first thing that you should know is roughly 90% of a country's water usage goes towards agriculture and growing food. Only 5% of the water is used at residencies, and another 5% goes towards industrial projects such as cooling down power plants. For example, it takes roughly 28 liters of water to make the ingredients that go into a 591 milliliter Coca-Cola bottle. It takes 74 liters of water to make a glass of beer, and 130 liters of water to make a cup of coffee. Now, Saudi Arabia gets roughly 40% of its water from groundwater aquifers. This water is then piped to the man-made crop fields, which is a large reason why the country has been able to have an agricultural sector at all. But again, things have changed recently. The trouble with a country using groundwater as a main source of water is that this water is non-renewable and doesn't get replenished because it does not rain very often in Saudi Arabia. This has led aquifer water levels to drop by over 500 feet in the last 25 years, meaning that Saudi Arabia is quickly running out of water reserves. And this has caused a dramatic shift in their economic plan. 
They stopped trying to turn their deserts into water-intensive crop fields and began investing heavily and striking trade deals for farmland in the United States, Argentina, and several African countries. So over the past decade, they have been growing most of their food in these countries and then shipping it overseas to themselves simply because these countries have more access to water. This means that Saudi Arabia has had to pay other countries a premium just in order to get access to enough water to feed their citizens. And this is a problem that is not just contained to Saudi Arabia. Worldwide, groundwaters are beginning to run dry. And some places that you might not expect will soon be facing a water crisis. For example, Cape Town in South Africa began running out of water in 2015. This made the city place heavy water restrictions for several years in order to help replenish their water supply. And this water crisis caused a spike in poverty, inflation, and food shortages throughout the city. And this effect will likely soon be felt in many other cities around the world. Sao Paulo, London, Melbourne, Jakarta, Beijing, Istanbul, Tokyo, Bangalore, Mexico City, and the Southwest United States are all areas that are expected to face extremely high amounts of water stress within the next two decades. And according to several reports out of Harvard and the World Economic Forum, within the next five decades, the most populated countries in the world in China, India, and the United States are all expected to face a water crisis. And I mean, you can learn a lot about a city or country by just looking up where it gets its water supply. For example, New York City gets a lot of its water from Delaware and the Catskill Mountains, which are piped in from nearly 150 kilometers away. Beijing, which is one of the most advanced and populated cities in the world, gets 60% of its water from groundwater. But because it is facing water shortages, the city is building a 1,000 kilometer pipeline from the Han River to Beijing. And this pipeline is actually one of the most expensive engineering projects in human history, costing nearly $80 billion. That's $20 billion more than the Three Gorges Dam. Now, the real problem is this. As countries begin to run out of water, they stop producing water-based food and resources meaning that the countries that are low on water rely heavily upon trading with those that do have water in order to get water-based products. And those products can be anything from food like wheat, cows, and wine, to everyday consumer items. All this means is that once the water supply of a country runs low, they will rely upon water-rich countries in order to function. And that is why we might be seeing water empires being built right in front of our very eyes. In fact, Goldman Sachs called water the petroleum of the next century, meaning that the countries with water in the next century will be massive economic players, similar to how oil-rich countries were the massive economic players over the past century. I mean, over the last 100 years, only about 12 countries produced the vast majority of oil for all 195 countries on the planet. And we might be seeing that same pattern with water. Right now, the list of major net importers of water products that also have high water scarcity are North Africa, the Middle East, Mexico, Japan, South Korea, and most countries in Europe. And that list is expected to grow and include countries like China, the United States, and India in the coming decades. Meanwhile, the largest net exporters of water products that also have little to no water scarcity are Russia, Brazil, Argentina, several Central African countries, the Nordic countries, and Canada. Meaning that these countries will likely be able to control the water market over the coming decades as other countries begin to run out of water. And just to give you some perspective on how much of a powerhouse the three biggest water countries could become, a study from the Central Intelligence Agency showed that Russia, Brazil, and Canada have more renewable freshwater resources than all of Europe, Australia, Africa, the United States, China, and India combined. This means that those three countries in Brazil, Russia, and Canada, who have the largest surplus of water resources, will likely be seeing a large increase in trade and investment from other countries seeking to import water-based products. And we have already started seeing this effect. 
For example, Canada has seen nearly a 50% increase in exports of water-intensive crops like canola, lentils, oats, and wheat since 2010. But the economic benefits of owning a large portion of the world's fresh water might not just be for countries. Many hedge funds and banks such as Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, Barclays Bank, HSBC, and many others have been investing billions of dollars into land with large amounts of fresh water along with investing in water companies. And some individuals like the billionaire T. Boone Pickens, who made his money through oil and finance, ended up buying hundreds of thousands of acres of land with fresh groundwater in West Texas. And once West Texas went through a drought in 2011, he sold the rights to the water for roughly $103 million. And examples like this are going on all over the world right now.